So Bobby Joe Long's mother used to work in bars. She was single, she was on her own with him, um, she had to go out and work, she was the breadwinner. As a child, Long suffered many accidents, head injuries that caused several periods of unconsciousness. Some were minor, like falling from a swing. Others were more serious, falling downstairs and being thrown from a horse. One of his most serious injuries occurred at the age of seven when he was hit by a car. The accident left him with a deformed jaw and teeth. And the kids would worry him to death about that. And, uh, and he finally had an operation on that as well. He wore those scars, you know, all of his life. With money scarce, they live frugally in a one-bedroom apartment, even sharing a single bed until Bobby Joe was a teenager. Bobby Joe confided in his ex-wife, Cindy, about his relationship with his mother. He would tell me that certain nights that she would come home with a, a boyfriend, that he would get woke up and put on the couch while the boyfriend spent the night with her. Long slept with his mother which often angered him when she brought home a man of which there are a string. And I think it's in there somewhere that the genesis of Long's loathing for women began. When you look at how he speaks about his mother and, and what he thought about her, he held her in, in quite a lot of contempt and disdain. He said some very offensive things about her. He criticised the fact that she worked as a barmaid, that she wore revealing outfits. And, and that, for me, says that he's got some incredibly fixed and, and very conservative views about women, who they are, how they should behave. They should look after their husbands, look after their children. He's got a very fixed idea of, of, of men as breadwinners and, and women as caregivers. Long harboured a grudge against his mother for not looking after him or paying him enough attention. He had a horrible resentment towards his mother. And to be very honest with you, had I have ever heard that he you know, had harmed his mom, I probably wouldn't have been surprised because he really did have a hate for his mother. And uh, as time went on, uh, the more time she, she paid to men, uh, the more he resented it. And, and psychiatrists have said that that's part of his problem, that, that he was actually killing his mother. Again and again, he hated women. Long had also been born with a condition that would later in life prove a challenge to his masculinity. He had Kleinfelter syndrome, which meant that he had two X chromosomes and one Y. Now, one of the symptoms of that is it gives a young boy, as he grows into, into adolescence, significant extra estrogen. High levels of the female hormone can result in men developing enlarged breast tissue called gynecomastia. This happened to Bobby Joe Long, to his great embarrassment, and I think also heightened the fact that he loathed women. Age 13, Bobby Joe Long underwent surgery to remove his breasts, leaving ugly scars that made the young man very self-conscious about his body. When we were kids, you know, we were always swimming at, down in the Keys and everything. He would always keep a shirt on because he was embarrassed of the scars from the surgery. By his early teens, this cocktail of anger at his mother and his own physical self-loathing was already beginning to turn Bobby Joe Long into an angry young man. Bobby Joe Long had a fresh hunting ground of Tampa Bay, where just raping and abusing women was no longer enough. He would go from being the classified ad rapist into a serial killer. Divorced from his wife, Bobby Joe Long began his sadistic murderous spree. Preying on vulnerable young women in the red light district, his need for sexual gratification was insatiable. On the 10th of May, 1984, exotic dancer Lana had arranged to meet her boyfriend after work and was walking along the strip. Lana was an Asian. She was a pole dancer in a bar on the strip. Uh, she, uh, she had relocated from California, and she had a boyfriend. She was often asked to go home, you know, to be taken home, but she didn't usually do that, even though that was extra money. Bobby Jolong came along in the car, and he stopped the car and asked her 
if she'd like a ride. She got into the car, and that was his first known victim in that killing frenzied period. Lana's body was found three days later by two boys near East Bay Road, Tampa. She'd been brutally raped, strangled, and her body grotesquely posed. She had the hangman's noose around her neck, and she was cut while that, all that was going on. It was out of control. The, the, the ligatures showed signs of, of, of a knife, and he just left her in the field. This was, was one of those, those cases where you have this first murder, and the, the individual who's been killed is associated with the sex work trade, is, is somebody who's seen as less deserving. And very often, these murders don't get the same attention, don't get the, the same kind of investigation as others. So very often, these first murders are real opportunities to apprehend a serial killer before they kill again. On the 26th of May, Long struck once again. He picked up 22-year-old sex worker Michelle on the strip. Michelle was a beauty queen at one time, and, and she was very pretty, but she was a drug addict, and, uh, and so she did that to support her, uh, her habit. After she got in the car, Long drove to Park Road, known as the local lover's lane. He tied her up, beat her, and viciously raped her, and then threw her out of the car. But Michelle was still alive. This victim has got spirit, and she puts up a fantastic fight, which makes him extremely angry. So angry, indeed, that he not only does he try and strangle her, he then goes on to cut her throat viciously. So he cut the throat of one victim. He really didn't care. He wanted to, to get his pleasure, have his fun, and then just simply dispose of these women. When you're getting to that level of brutality, we are beyond simply ending a life. We are into cruelty. We are into doing things for Long's own perverted pleasure. And that, to my mind, is evil. Strangulation and the use of ligatures became Long's killing trademarks. He used ropes and a series of knots to create a collar like a hangman's noose. With strangulation, you're very physically close and you have complete control. You have ownership of that other person while you're strangling them and you know you have power of life and death literally in your hands. Michelle's body was found a day later in an isolated area of Hillsborough County by a construction worker. There was no indication that Long selected women of a physical type, but during his eight-month killing spree, all of his victims were young women and the majority were sex workers. The net is closing very quickly around Long. They were not going to let this guy commit yet another murder. And they followed him to a movie theater one day, and he went in and he watched a film, and the police waited outside for, for him to come out. On November the 16th, 1984, Long was arrested outside a movie theater. His Dodge Magnum was seized, and a sample of the red carpet from the vehicle was immediately submitted to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement Crime Lab. When questioned about the abduction and rape of Lisa, he quickly confessed. You said something earlier, okay? About the reason you let go. And what would happen as a result of letting her go. You want to say that again? I knew it would lead to me getting caught. Why did you know what? I just knew it would. I knew she saw me. And I had a pretty good idea she could see underneath the blindfolds. And it was a real tug of war trying to decide if I should let her go or not. But I didn't want to hurt her. But when he was interviewed about the eight murders, he denied all knowledge of them. Within hours of sending the carpet sample from Long's car to the forensics lab, the results were back. The fibers were an exact match to the ones found on the victims and on Lisa's clothes. There is no doubt whatever that those red carpet fibers were the link 
among a number of the killings and identified Bobby Joe as a serial killer. So they tell him about the carpet fibres um, and he realises that the game is up. So what he's doing here is he's trying to get back in control. So he confesses to the murders. He said, yes, it was me. Where is it you dropped the glove? Did you ever go out and scout him ahead of time or anything? Or just go around and find him? No, I never scouted him. While being interviewed, Long made another shocking admission. He revealed the location of another victim, 21-year-old waitress Vicky in Hillsborough County. But by that point, he was well aware that the scales of justice were certainly tipping against him. As if to dot the I's and cross the T's, Long drew them a map of where he dumped Vicky's body. If there was a final nail in his coffin, that was most certainly it. So, he called me, and when I answered the phone, I could tell right away something was wrong in his voice. And he said, you know, the girls. I killed the girls in Tampa. And I said, you know, you're not funny. Don't mess with me like that. And then Bob asked me, he said to um, call his parents and tell our children that he was killed in a car accident. And I said, I'm not going to lie to our kids. You know, and, and I couldn't lie to them. But just six days after his arrest, another body was found in rural southern Hillsborough County, that of 18-year-old Artis, a prostitute long picked up in March 1984. He confessed to her murder, and it's believed that Artis was his first victim. Long had now claimed the lives of ten women. On April the 22nd, 1985, in Dade City, Pasco County, Florida, Long was tried for the murder of 18-year-old waitress and sex worker Virginia. He was found guilty and was sentenced to die by electric chair. 